Everyone may request the mission. Besides the fact that you don't have to wear a tie, but besides that, is I'm always looking for something to clean my glasses. <laughs> and it, it's perfect. I mean, normally when my shirts are tucked in, I'm like trying to do like this, like, you know, <laughs> it just doesn't work. And so, so this is awesome. I'm like, hey, I love it, man. <laughs> These work good, you know. Because my problem is I get my fingerprints all over my glasses. I don't know, you guys that have lived with glasses your whole life, you probably know how to deal with it. But for me, it's just been the last, uh, uh, really in 2018, actually, I was in India. And uh, I, I was in India, and I needed to get my eyes checked. And so the missionary says, oh, there's an eye shop right here. Well, go get your eyes checked. So uh, we went in, and 
you know, the doctor checked my eyes out and he said, well, you have a problem. And I said, okay, let me have it. He said, he said you had too many birthdays. <laughs> so that's the problem. He said, your eyes are just, that's just age and now, so I got to wear these readers in order to read anything, but that's life, I guess. As a college friend used to say, it's life in the big city. Uh, so. <laughs> All right, well, you can turn to your Bibles tonight to 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. I'm going to speak to you for a few minutes about a, a thought or an idea that consumes me. It, it is my heartbeat. It is, a, it is a passion that I have. And the church family at Hunt Valley Baptist Church, where I have the privilege of pastoring, they, they know this about me, and it's just something that I pray that the Spirit of God would get a hold of you, and you might be able to feel it, and be, maybe pursue or purpose in your own heart to do so wisely. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, look at verse number 15. Verse number 15, this is our text for our afternoon service here. He says, and I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. The Apostle Paul here was communicating to those in Corinth that he desired to spend and be spent for the cause of Christ. To do all that he could, to spend every minute of his life, every dollar there that he earned, every uh, passion that he had was to be in the pursuit of being what he could do or accomplishing what he can for Christ. To spend it all for God. Well, this verse has always hit me right between the eyes. It's something that has been a desire of my heart. You guys don't know, but my family does, and those that are with us from Hunt Valley know that as a young man, I had the normal aspirations of any young man. I wanted to be rich. I wanted to be rich. I was a teenager, and boy, I wanted to go. I wanted to, when I grew up, I wanted to have a businessman. I wanted to be making lots of money. I wanted to drive a Mercedes. I sat in a Mercedes when I was about 15 years old, and I got out, and it was... The, the sticker price on the window was $98,000. And I said, that's what I want. I want a Mercedes. There used to be a play, a guy out in Valparaiso, Indiana, a doctor that lived in there in Indiana. And I, I was a drywall contractor at the time, and I would drive by his house. He owned his own helicopter. And he would fly. He was a doctor in Chicago. And he would fly from there and land on top of the hospital to go to work. And I said, that's, that's what I want to do. I, I want to... I want to fly to work in my own helicopter. I mean, so I wasn't talking about just wanting a little bit of spending money. I wanted to be like me and Elon were going to be buds, right? <laughs> I wanted money. Well, here's the thing. As a young man, I, I realized I took a look at my life like reality. Like, okay, let's, you can dream all you want, right? But let's, let's get down to reality. I looked at my life and I said, you know, the fact of the matter is, me and my friends, we're just well-dressed bums. Mm -hmm. We're just a bum. Because I was a lazy, unmotivated, undriven. I had dreams, boy, I wanted to accomplish everything. But I would sit down on the couch and do nothing. Just having a dream is not going to get you there. You gotta to decide to start to do something about it. And so as a as a high school student, my senior year in high school, I did two years of equivalent of two years of high school in one year. Not only that, at the same time, I, I would leave school at one o'clock and I went to a local community college and I took college classes for two hours every day on computer programming. Then I left there and I went to Walmart and worked from uh, three o'clock until 8 o'clock every night, and then I would come home and do my homework, get up and go to school again in the morning. It was like a switch clicked in my life, and I said, listen, if I want to accomplish something, i got to do something, and, and, and I changed. So then I took another hard look at my life as a young man and said, okay, this is my pursuit, this is what I want to do, but 
I want to go out and make a lot of money, but here's the thing. I need to know whether God is real or not. So I decided to go to college for a year, and I remember it like it was yesterday because I pulled up onto the campus of the school. I parked my car right in the front of the church, and I bowed my head right there, and I said, God, I'll give you one year. If you'll get a hold of my heart, if you'll show me you're real, I'll be serious about it. I'll be, I'll be real. If you're real, show, show me you're real. Do something in my life. Change me. And I'll spend my life for you. But if something doesn't happen this year, I'm going to go make money. That's what I want to do. And during that year of college, God changed my heart. God changed the desire of the young man who wanted to go and earn a lot of money with his life to wanting to go and serve God with his life. Amen. To wanting to please the Lord. God says that He will give you the desires of your heart. You know, there's a twofold aspect in that verse. First of all, is God will give you the right desire. Mm -hmm. It's not just that God will give you what you want, but if you're honestly seeking Him, God will give you the right desire. Mm -hmm. He'll give you the desire of your heart. And then, He will bring it to fruition in your life. So both aspects are true. And as a young man, uh, I was able to experience, I, I owned my own business while I was in college. And at one point, had 23 guys working for me. Uh, from a world standpoint, I was very successful. And I was just a young college student. But you know what? None of that mattered to me. That's not what I was pursuing at that time. God gave me that desire just to say, okay, you put me first, here you go. Mm. And I didn't really desire that. And as soon as I could go into the ministry... I went, I went from making about $65 an hour uh, to making about $2 an hour in the ministry. And that's what I made for a long time in, in the ministry. But it's not about what you make. It's about what does God want you to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. I desire to please God. And ultimately this verse here, I would very gladly spend and be spent for you. Became a focus a passion of my life to do what God wanted me to do. Through my college years is when God gave me the verse that became my theme verse for my life. I'm sure you guys know it. Maybe the song. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be verse became my life's verse because I purposed in my heart to seek God first. Amen. Whatever God was going to give me after that, whatever God was going to bring into my life was okay with me because I desired to seek Him. Amen. I would like to preach for you just a few minutes on the idea of spent or squandered. Mm. Spent or squandered. Are you going to spend your life uh, pursuing God and His will and doing what God wants you to do or are you going to squander your life yeah. on useless, meaningless pursuits? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if I took a dollar and I was going to pick on WT, but he left again. Oh, there he is. Uh, <laughs> and, and gave it to WT and said, uh, here, I got a dollar for you. You can go spend it on whatever you want, but don't squander it. And if he took the dollar and he went to the store and he says, oh, I can buy 100 of these Mentos. You got to buy 100 Mentos. And then on his way home, he opened up 100 Mentos and ate them all. <laughs> and he got home and he's like, oh, I'm full. Oh, but oh, they were so good. He squandered a dollar, right? But if he went out and uh, he said, boy, at a used bookstore, I could buy this Bible for a dollar. He spent it. Mm. Right? He spent the dollar on something of value, something worth something, something that was going to last some time, something of meaningful uh, sustenance. Well, 
we have our lives, and the most valuable thing we have in our life is the time that we have to live. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You can go out and earn another dollar. You cannot earn one more minute to live. You can't, you can't get back another, another minute. You can't get back another opportunity. Once today is spent, it's gone. Yeah. And you, you chose today to spend your time today in God's house, and that's worthwhile. Hey, that's right. Yeah. To spend your time there. Other people chose to squander their Sunday. Mm -hmm. They took their Sunday and they went out and they spent it on meaningless things and all the time that they had. And maybe they washed their car. You know what? Their car is going to get dirty again. Maybe they went and they went to do some grocery shopping and they got some errands done and they went down and visited a friend or something. But they took all that time and spent it on those things, but it's all gone and they'll never get it back. That's right. So that what I want to ask you tonight is, are you spending your life on meaningful things or are you squandering it on useless, meaningless endeavors? I can't tell you, beloved, that since the time as a young person there, college age, that I purposed in my heart to seek first the kingdom of God, that there weren't times in my life and ministry where I got distracted, where I got kind of off course and maybe... Uh, spent a little bit too much time on something that didn't matter as much. And God had to get a hold of my heart again and say, wait, where are you spending your time? What is your life verse? You're spending your time on this. You're squandering it instead of spending it on something of value. In Mark chapter 4, verse number 19, it says, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. You know, sometimes the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, the desire to have wealth, the desire to acquire and to have more of this world's goods, and all the energy and, and uh, time invested in trying to get more of that, that's going to be meaningless. It's going to be of no value. Sometimes the world and the flesh, the devil, these things distract us. Sometimes they pull us away from what should be our pursuit. They choke out the Word of God and what He wants to do in our life. That's why God has services like this. That's why we come back to church so that God can focus us again and Amen. help us to get on track to do what God wants us to do. You know, I love the stories of David... That man, the Bible says, was a man after God's own heart. He went after it. He went after God's heart. He desired to know God and be known of God. And he wanted to please God. Now, did David always get it right? No. David didn't always get it right. But you know what he did? He did turn back to God. He did go back towards uh, what God wanted. Unlike Solomon whom the Bible says is the wisest man that ever lived, but the Bible said he allowed his wives and concubines to uh, turn his heart away from God. And the children of Israel, their heart was turned away from God. He didn't turn back to God. David, although he messed up, he still had a heart for God. And that's what we need to have and realize when God's calling us back saying, hey, you're getting a little distracted. You're getting off. You're getting a little bit too far. Child, come home. You're going to either spend your life on doing what God has for you to do, or you're going to squander it on your own desires. It's a choice we all got to make. There's some younger men here, younger ladies here, and you're at that stage, that age of life, where you're deciding where I'm going to be, what I'm going to do. You're looking at your life and saying that this is what I want to do. But, uh, you know... If you're a child of God, that you're not your own. You've been bought with a price. Amen. Therefore, the desire or the passion needs to be, God, what do you want me to do? And we need to humbly submit. <coughs> Say, okay, God, this is what you want me to do. This is what I'm going to spend my life on. I'm going to take my hours and my days and my time and energy. I'm going to spend my life doing this instead of squandering it on useless, meaningless things. There's people today, they spend so much of their time and their money on just, we could even say like our physical, like how we look. 
I have no idea what you call it. You ladies know all these things, the different creams you could buy, you know, make your face look good, keep the wrinkles off, and, uh, you know, in my shower at home. Just so I'm not exaggerating, I on purpose stopped and counted the bottles of stuff that's in there. There was 27 bottles of different things in our shower. Now, I only need one. <laughs> one bar of soap is enough for me. One, one, one little, I mean, whatever is enough. I have no idea why I need stuff for straggly hair or for dry hair or for wet hair or for oily hair or, you know, <laughs> more. what I'm just saying. We can, we can spend our money on, on so many things. And hey, ladies, I praise God for you. And I, I <laughs> fill in my dick in a hole. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm just saying, hey, you're going to spend your money on something. You're going to spend your time on something. You know, guys, you have your own pursuits. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I like golfing. Um, what, do, what do you guys do here, the guys here? What do they spend their time and energy on? Getting one bar of soap. <laughs> <laughs> Try, trying to find one bar. Yeah. You spend, spend your time on, on your pursuits, your passion. What do you, what do you like? Do you like some sports? Basketball. 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 Spend hours and hours watching basketball, dreaming about being on the court there, playing, pulling up those those jumper shots. You know, you spend your life on that instead of you're squandering your life on that instead of spending it on things of value. God help us to spend our time and money and energy on things that will last for eternity. You know, I'm reminded of the prodigal son. The prodigal son, the Bible says that he had spent his living. He says, and when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want. He was in want. You know, that's where you will be if you spend or squander your life on meaningless pursuits. Yeah. It will never satisfy. You can read Ecclesiastes in the Song of Solomon says, Yea, all is vanity and vexation of soul and spirit. He says, I tried pleasure. He says, he says I, I gave everything that my heart desired, I gave it to it. Anything I wanted, I, I was able to have. And he said, I found that it was meaningless. It meant nothing. And he, he talks, he goes through page after page and describes life and the pursuits that he had. And it was all meaningless. It meant nothing, and so much of our life can be that way. You'll always be in want. The Bible says the eyes of man are never satisfied. It doesn't matter. Uh, you, you can uh, look and say, boy, I really want to get that, that scooter. I've been looking for that scooter, and I want to get a scooter. And, man, I, and you, you're looking at it, and you, you desire it for years, and, and, and you save, and you look, finally you're able to get that scooter, and you find out that, Oh, that scooter is only 125 cc's, but there is one I just saw, and it's 225 cc's, and it's going to do, oh, that would be so much stronger, so much better, and the eyes of men are never satisfied. That's right. yeah. But I'm saying you're going to spend your life trying to acquire everything that this world has to offer, and you're still going to be in want. You're never going to be satisfied, but when we are spend our life on Jesus Christ, Amen. you are satisfied. That's right. You are satisfied. What are you spending your life on tonight? What are you spending your time and your energy, your, your dreams and your aspirations, your focus? What are you spending your life on? What are you spending your life on? Some people are spending their life on this right here. Hours and hours and hours. Right? Apple uh, put uh, the screen time monitor on there. You just don't want to look at it. 
You don't want to know how much time you spent looking at that screen. You know, this, this is a, a side note, but uh, people that are getting stuff done aren't spending all the time on their phones. You know, I watched a, a news, uh, somebody interviewing Elon Musk, and they asked Elon, how, how much screen time do you have in a day? And he's like, I don't know. He's like, an hour maybe. And uh, they said, well, the phone records it. Can we look? And he's like, sure. You know, so he handed his phone. Uh, in the last 24 hours, he had like five minutes of screen time. That was his screen time. I'm saying he, what he's accomplishing, and he's not a Christian. He's spending his life on a bunch of foolishness trying to get to Mars to save the world. Uh, you know, if he'd read the Bible, he could spend his money on something else. Right. Uh, and he believes in evolution and lots of other stuff. But practically, from a practical st standpoint of spending his time, he's not wasting it like that. And sadly, a lot of Christians are just wasting their days, wasting their hours, spending their energy on useless pursuits. In Isaiah 49, verse number 4, Isaiah 49, and verse number 4, he says, Then I said, I labored in vain. What's the next part of that sentence? He said, Then I labored in vain, and I have spent my strength for naught. Spent my strength for naught. Spent my strength for naught. You know, when I was a teenager, I rode a skateboard. I spent a lot of hours on a skateboard. From the world standpoint, I was pretty proficient at riding a skateboard. And uh, I can look back at that and say, you know what? I spent that time for not thousands of hours I spent on a skateboard. And it was wasted. It was meaningless. It meant nothing. I got nothing out of it. Nothing I can use today. No skills outside of once in a while when I'm out visiting and I see some kids riding a skateboard. I can say, hey, can I try that? And they, they're pretty impressed that an old fat guy can ollie. Uh, you know, um, I can still do a trick or two. And so they're pretty, they're like, whoa. And I, I, the, the worst was when one kid goes, man, you're old school. <laughs> I said, oh, thank you. Uh, but outside of a couple things like that, it was wasted time. Spent my life, so many of my hours as teenagers on, on meaningless pursuit. What are you spending your life on, ladies? What are you spending your days, your hours on? The time that you have. Is it squandered? Is it wasted? <coughs> you know, beloved, we want to see God do great things in our life. Just like I, as a young boy, had a passion that wanted to accomplish something. And then I looked at my life and said, I'm not going to accomplish it just sitting here. Well, listen, we want to see God do great things in Mount Zion Baptist Church. Yes. We want to see God do great things in our in our own hearts and lives. Well, it's not going to happen until we get the passion that Paul had. And he says, I would very gladly spend and be spent. If I've got some energy, I would rather use my energy to sweep the floor at church than to do something myself. What about you? Where, where are you? What is your passion? What is your desire? Where do you want to spend your time? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. If I've got the option to go visit somebody for church or I can go uh, to a ball game, which, which, one, which one am I going to do? The ball game is use, useless, wasted, squandered time. Visit somebody is an investment in eternity. You know? It's time and things that will last forever. Notice in the verse there, our text verse, 2 Corinthians 12, verse number 15. He says, and I would very gladly, gladly spend and be spent. You know, there's a difference between just doing what you know you're supposed to do and doing it gladly. Mm -hmm. Doing it gladly. You know, uh, I would often give my kids responsibilities, jobs to do. And there was a big difference between them just getting it done and them doing it gladly. God wants servants that are serving Him from a heart of gladness. That's gladly. Right. Gladly doing what God wants us to do, desire to do. Not begrudgingly. Not because there was nobody else. Nobody else will clean the church, so I guess I'll do it. 
No, there may be six other people that want to do it, but well, I want to do it. I want to be part of it. I want to gladly go to do it. Are you truly glad for the opportunities that you have to serve the king? Think about Paul and his statement in, first, uh, in Philippians chapter 3. He says, Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. You think about the Apostle Paul when he first went, uh, before he became a Christian, how zealous he was, how fervent he was as a Pharisee of Pharisees. I mean, he, he pursued his beliefs and what he wanted to do at that time with, with all fervency. But then when he got saved, he said, boy, I count all that energy, all that effort, all the time I spent on all that stuff as useless, as wasted, except for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. The question tonight is, what are you spending your life on? What are you spending your days on? You know, coming on a mission trip like this, we count it as a privilege and, and a blessing. But it does take a right heart for that. Because, you know, some people would say, man, you could have took that money and you could have gone to Disneyland. You could have taken that money, you could have took a vacation to Disney World, you could have gone and seen this or seen that. But that same money, there's nothing wrong with doing these other things, but when you have the option to go on a mission trip, serve God, impact lives for eternity, do something that's meaningful, or go over here and spend a couple days on meaningless activity, which one's going to impact eternity? Which one's going to last forever? You have to evaluate what you're spending your life on. Right, Amen. David stood before Goliath and he said, Is there not a cause? Beloved, there's a cause. There's a cause that we've been called to. There's something bigger than us, something more important than our own desires. We need to be purpose in our heart to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Don't worry about all these things. All these things God will take care of. All these things He'll add to your life. Right. If we would seek first the kingdom of God. Our Heavenly Father has given us a cause. The world is lost and dying and on their way to hell without a Savior. They, they don't know about the Savior. It's our job to go and tell them. To preach the truth. To live as Christians before a lost and dying world so that they can be drawn to the Savior. You know, most people today, they think about spending their time. They, they, no, most people today wouldn't think anything about sitting down and spending, or should I say squandering, two hours of their life to watch a movie. Wouldn't think anything of it. Oh, that's just normal. Um, but then, what about spending two hours knocking doors? Oh, I don't know, Pastor, I just don't have the time. I just can't find time to do that. Two hours getting ready for the next Bible club or, uh, you know, junior church class. Oh, that's so much time. What are you spending your time on? You get asked to stay a few minutes after church to help clean up. Oh, I don't know if I have time. I, I, I got to do I got to go. What are you spending your time on? I know we all have our own lives. Everybody has their life and their things that they got to do. We all are living. But you make the choice to decide where you're going to spend your time. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember years and years ago, we had a lady, one of the sweetest ladies you'll ever meet, loved God and still serving in the church there. And uh, I went over to her house once to visit her get pick something up or whatever and her living room was a mess it was a mess and she apologized for it and she said you know Caleb years ago and my husband and I decided this together we said well we can either clean the church or we can clean our house we decided to clean the church we only had so much time 
What are we going to do? And can I tell you, she was at the church all the time. She was at the church all the time. They, they were among the first people there, and they were among the last people to leave every single service. They served God. And you could ask of them, hey, can you stay and do this? Can you get this ready for that? Could you come early and do this? Always willing to serve. And they just purpose in their heart, you know what? I've only got so much time, and so if I've only got this much time, and something needs done at God's house, I'm going to do that. You see, but most people live the opposite way. Most people say, oh, no, nope, I've got to do this at home first. I've got to get this stuff done. If I have any time left, I'll help out at church. But you see, her and her husband together decided, you know what, we're going to put God's house first. And if we have any time left, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of home. And if not, home's just going to go without. That's the right way to think about it. Most people spend all their time at job, working, earning money so that they can live, so that they can buy the things that they want. And if I have any time, I'll serve God. Instead of, no, I want to serve God. If, if I have time... I'll go earn some money. I'll go do what I have to in this world. Only one life <coughs> will soon be passed, and only what's done for Christ will last. That's all. We've only got one life to live for Jesus. God has given us a cause. What will you give Him? Will you give God your skills, your ability, your talents? and serve Him with them? What do you have that God could use? He could use your energy. He could use your strength. He could use your talent or skills that you may have. You know, when somebody is motivated, when somebody has, has desire, they're motivated. And when somebody has desire, there is nothing, there is no such thing as inconvenient. When somebody has desire, there's no such thing as inconvenient. But when somebody lacks desire, there is no such thing as convenient. You see, a lot of people are willing to serve God when it's convenient. But it's not based on convenience, it's based on desire. Because when you have desire, there is no such thing as inconvenient. You know, when I was dating this, this lady over here, we were in college, and she finished college, and she went home to Michigan. It was four and a half hours from college. You know, I didn't think anything about taking a cut day from college, missing classes, which you could only miss five, and if you miss five, you fail. So I, I would take a cut day with permission, but I could take a, get in a car, drive four and a half hours to spend two or three hours with her, and then get in a car and drive four and a half hours back. That's nutso. <laughs> Why would I do that? Because desire, mm. there's nothing inconvenient That's good. Mm -hmm. when there's desire. But when there's not desire, there's no, there's no, it's never convenient. People say, oh yeah, I'll, I'll serve the Lord if I can find some time. If I can, if I can, you know, move some things around, we'll see if, 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 if it'll work. No, you purpose in your heart to do it and let the other things work. Figure out the other stuff. What it boils down to is the desire of the heart. Paul said, I would gladly therefore be spend and be spent. And for me as a pastor, that's my desire. I want to spend and be spent for God. At our church the last few weeks, uh, we had to replace some carpet in the church. We had to tear the old carpet out, put some new carpet down. We got the carpet. And uh, I mean, I'm still the pastor. We still have all the other responsibilities going on. But uh, we laid the carpet. Basically, me and my boys. I love doing that. It's fun. So we worked. We worked on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday because those are the days before the ministry gets too heavy uh, and put in about uh, 35, 40 hours in Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then the ministry Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then the next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, 35, 40 hours. 
I'm just telling you that God put a passion in my heart to serve Him. Amen. And I'm asking you, what is, what is in your heart? You're either going to spend your life for Jesus Christ, or you're going to squander it on wasteful things that this world has to offer. And there's a lot of things this world has to offer for us to spend time on. But where are you going to spend your time? I have every head bowed and every eye closed for a minute. I'm going to ask the pianist to come. We want to play a moment of invitation. D.L. Moody said, the world is yet to see what God could do with a man who would be fully and wholly consecrated unto him. What about you? Would you say to me, Pastor Caleb, as I evaluate, I think I've been squandering some time. Would you pray for me? Would you show me about the hands? They pray for me. I've been squandering time. There's hands all over the room tonight. I need desire. Thank you. You can put your hands down. I need God to allow me to purpose in my heart to spend and be spent for Jesus Christ. Lord, as we have this invitation, I pray, God, that you would do the work that only you could do in the hearts of your people. May they respond. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Bill, Pastor Bill, would you come as the invitation continues? If God spoke to your heart, you do what God wants you to do.